Hi guys, Dr. Burke here. In this video, we're going to talk about enzymes. Now, what are enzymes? Enzymes are many little protein worker bees in your body. They do the work. So you have carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, and you have vitamins and minerals and essential fatty acids and all these, these raw materials, but it's the enzymes that manipulate the raw material to make things, okay? So first of all, when you eat, it, there's enzymes that are triggered by your, uh, the food that you eat, and it tells the pancreas what enzyme to release. So there's very specific enzymes for very specific foods. And so when that enzyme is um, ready and being pumped out, by the time the food gets down there, it breaks down that type of uh, food. So you have protein, uh, protein enzymes, fat enzymes, carbohydrate enzymes, starch enzymes, you have enzymes for breaking down the DNA. You have enzymes for collagen. So you have a lot of different enzymes. So the food is broken down into small little particles. Okay, So you have proteins are broken down into amino acids, fats into, into fatty acids, uh, carbohydrates into fiber, and glucose. Right. So what happens is that now your body has to make enzymes to build back up these small particles into new tissue. So let's say you ate, um, I don't know, you ate something like this, right? Well, this is going to be turning into something in your body. It's going to actually, enzymes have to break it down and then help replace some body tissue. So what happens at the cellular level, you have this genetic blueprint. It's called the DNA, which basically is in the instructions how to tell the uh, little enzymes what to do. Okay, so you have the center of the cell, which has the blueprints, the DNA. And you also have a little copy machine inside the cell. That's called the RNA. So you have the DNA and the RNA. So a copy is made, it's translated, it's interpreted, and it's shifted over into little mini factories inside the cell. One is called the ribosomes, which is a little machine that makes protein. Okay? It turns amino acid into protein, but it needs instructions. And enzymes are involved in these translation, transport, and there's a second step. Enzymes actually are a second, like a proofreader. You have a proofreader. You have a copy machine, you have blueprints, and you have a proofreader inside your cell. So these enzymes scan all this code looking for errors in the genetic code. Isn't it amazing? So therefore, you're ending up with a perfect duplicate of what was originally intended to, for it to create. The accuracy rate of this proofreading mechanism is like one in a hundred million, like the errors are less than one in a hundred million. And if there is a mistake, the enzymes will correct it. It slices out a section and replaces it. It's just fascinating. So, and then all these amino acids that are broken down are sent into the factory to start making body tissues. Okay, and it, it does it with amino acids and fat and, and, um, and all these um, processes need certain um, cofactors or coenzymes to make it all work. And that would be why we need vitamins, like the B vitamins, uh, the fat soluble vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin D, the trace minerals, minerals in general. All those are needed with the use of enzymes to get the job done in these chemical reactions. So, Enzymes also speed up the chemical reactions. If you didn't have enzymes, it could take literally millions of years for things to get done. With certain types of enzymes and certain chemical reactions in the body, you can get things done that should normally would take a million years into milliseconds. So they speed up the reactions of things. Okay? Enzymes can recycle itself, and that's what's fascinating. They actually don't get used up in the chemical reaction. It's just amazing. They actually get recycled. They're very efficient little guys. Drugs and poisons are enzyme inhibitors. That's how most drugs work. They inhibit enzymes in your body. So they block the enzyme reaction. Um, enzymes are triggered by pH changes. So there's a real strong protein enzyme in your stomach that is activated once your pH gets between 1 and 3, which is very, very, like battery acid. It's really strong. And then that enzyme for protein kicks in there, it gets released, and you can start breaking down protein. So if your stomach is not strong enough, especially as you age, and you don't have the acid, you're not going to release that protein enzyme. Therefore, you're not going to digest protein that well. It's going to end up 
you're going to get a gas and undigested protein and constipation and bloating just by this fact that the pH is incorrect. That's why it's important to have the different parts of your body the correct pH, whether it's in the blood or it's in the gut. It's, there's all these different pHs. So that's one of the purposes of having the correct pH is that it activates enzymes. Hormones can activate enzymes too. There's an enzyme that burns fat called hormone uh, sensitive uh, lipase. Okay? And that's activated by the lack of insulin. So when you don't have enough insulin or you have normal insulin, it's not too high, that enzyme kicks in there and starts burning fat for you. So then you have enzymes that are triggered by temperature. So if you take, for example, uh, canned food, what they do is they pasteurize it. Same thing they do with orange juice and a lot of the foods so it can sit on the shelf life because if you have other food that goes bad quick because enzymes, anytime you cook food, you can help it last longer on the shelf, right? But the problem is when you consume too many cooked foods over a long period of time, you can deplete your uh, enzyme reserves and end up with a lot of degenerative disorders, okay? So, but some of these um, enzymes can survive very, very high heat. There are enzymes produced by microbes that can withstand the heat of lava. I mean, that's just amazing to me. So, so temperatures can definitely affect um, certain enzymes. Um, we already talked about vitamins and minerals and cofactors, but what I wanted to mention to you is that each vitamin complex in nature ha comes with its own enzyme. Like vitamin C complex, it has ascorbic acid, it has vitamin P, which is bioflavonoids, it has vitamin J, which is the anti-pneumonia vitamin, it has vitamin K, which is for clotting, but it also has a, um, an enzyme called tyrosinase, which basically is made, is, is, um, made with, a, with a mineral, trace mineral, called copper. So it's an it's a enzyme form of copper that's used in the production of collagen. Okay, so that's why vitamin C is good for collagen. And your adrenal glands store vitamin C. So enzymes are involved in a lot of different things. See, vitamins wouldn't even work if you didn't have enzymes. And enzymes wouldn't work if you didn't have minerals. So you really need the whole package. So when we get into nutrition, we really we need plant-based uh, minerals. We don't want to take like minerals from the earth, like in soil, like calcium carbonate. And a lot of the minerals in synthetic vitamins are just like dead. But if you have plant-based minerals and trace minerals and vitamins, they're much more uh, functional. And when we get into synthetic vitamins, they're not very functional because they don't have enzymes. Okay, so enzymes are the magical worker that makes everything work. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Please click the subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.